Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 99. Holy moly. Papering over the past. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my creative and motivated co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Technically, this is our 100th episode. Oh, this is all lies. <laughs> since we started numbering at episode zero for our pilot. Mm. Uh, but next week will be our official episode 100. And it'll be a little bit special. And we have a little bit... Uh, what are, what are we doing? We're doing a... Like a get to know us. A get to know us. Right. If you care. If not, just skip that episode. Yeah, just go on to 101 then yeah. if you really don't want to know anything about us. Now, we are, we are going to showcase some of our unique items in our individual collections. Mm -hmm. Talk about a little bit of our collectible past, our pop culture, culture. cred, I guess. Sure. Why and we think we're pop culture fanatics i guess right. maybe you right. know we'll give a little bit my of my checking account makes me a pop culture <laughs> fanatic yeah mm, i yeah. spend enough on it yeah yeah so, so but that's next week mm -hmm. this week we're going to be talking in our disney detective about the untold history of the iconic wallpaper in the haunted mansion dun 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 yes i i put on a shirt specifically yeah, with wallpaper well, and you have your your jewelry that you received for your birthday. I did. We have our jewelry box. If uh -huh. I switch to that shot there, we have the jewelry box with another your bracelet accessory there. Accessory that I was gonna wear, and yeah, it's took just that off. Too loud for a <laughs> not podcast. meant for a podcast. Yeah, so <laughs> that that wouldn't work out so well. Right, right. Uh, what else we got? So we're going to be talking about the Disney's newest platform. It gives people access to hidden places in Disney World and Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Lucasfilm's possible Gina Carano replacement plan. Sounds like an equipment replacement plan when I break a phone. <laughs> um, Use this uh, upgrade into that. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> we'll also talk Star Wars books. We'll look at a guide to canon novels in the chronological order. And we're not going to go through all of them because that's a whole podcast probably. That's true. <laughs> Just for, for itself. So we'll we'll briefly talk about that. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And then in our entertainment news, some news from Stevie Wonder about moving to Ghana for some disturbing but legitimate reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that the MCU might be getting a major casting shakeup. Maybe, possibly, Let's hopefully. see what that has. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have a couple of interesting, uh, insightful picks this week. Mm -hmm. One that had to be heavily censored for the show. <laughs> um, you stole we'll it from get me, to that. but that's okay. Well, well you know, you gotta gotta strike, strike while the iron's hot. Strike while the iron's Blah blah. blah. <laughs> uh, anyway, bitter. Never. So before we get into that, I do want to plug the show real quick and uh, ask that folks subscribe to the show. You can subscribe to our video versions of all of our shows by subscribing to Insights into Things. You can get the audio versions of just this show if you subscribe to Insights into Entertainment. We're available on Google, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, Pandora, any, basically any place you can get a podcast now. <laughs> Uh, we do encourage you to subscribe because you'll get them first thing Monday morning at 8 when they go live. <clears throat> well, they don't actually go live. They, they 
go out on the right. The Unless feed. you happen to be watching us while right. we're streaming, which is really hard because we never stream at the same ne- time. We tried. We really did. Like, we, we had a schedule. Just watch our Twitch channel all day on Saturday, and you'll and see you'll something find go live. Something between you know the two. Yeah, yours that, is usually afternoon. Then we do teens in the morning, and right. then when we do our monthly podcast for tomorrow, that's randomly at any time. Right. Saturday or Sunday, depending on the day. So, exactly. Yeah. Except for next week, by the way, we are shooting ahead of schedule for teens. That is true. Uh, because we're having a special guest who was not available over the weekend. So we'll be shooting live, actually, during the week and recording the show during the week. So if you are you know, want to watch it live during the week. You can watch us can live. Watch. We'll be shooting uh, Tuesday at 7. We'll be going live. Oh, good to know. So, you know, dinner should be beforehand. Exactly. Thanks. Exactly. Th- thanks for the heads up. Uh, we also uh, <laughs> would encourage you to reach out to us and give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insights into things dot com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can catch us on Facebook at facebook dot com slash insights into things podcast or Instagram. We are at insights into things where you can get links to all those on our website. At www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready to get into it? Sure. All right, let's do it. Go for Disney Detective. So this was an interesting uh, little history uh story that that popped up on hunker.com um and it was basically the untold story of the iconic wallpaper at disneyland's haunted mansion so since opening its doors in 1969 14 years after disneyland began welcoming guests uh the haunted mansion became a topic of fascination for fans of old school disney facts and lore uh, there's obviously tons of urban legends about it, you know, um, that the house is actually haunted by real ghosts. Um, but it was the, you know, attention to detail, the 999 happy haunts to be exact, that makes it one of the most immersive and, um, you know, exciting ex- experiences in amusement park history it's also one of the last things that walt disney actually worked on before he had passed away so for some it represents a final connection to his creative spirit get it ha <laughs> spirit um but of course you know there's all the the detail you know within the haunted mansion but the one that kind of um you know is, is the most iconic i guess is the black and purple wallpaper, which at first, uh, you know, appeared to be, um, you know, uh, um, looked like an oversized mask. But when you actually look at it, it's comprised of creepy clusters of eyes. Um, And it's actually maintained, you know, attained cult status really um you know if you go to etsy you can find anything from phone cases to umbrellas um you know sporting various versions of the print um jason Searle, who was the author of the haunted mansion imagining a disney classic and also a former senior show writer for walt disney imagineering had said it's become a real symbol of the mansion. Um, he said, you know, most people gravitate towards it. And he believes, um, you know, it's because it has this striking icon of its, you know, of its own, and that the wallpaper, it's so subtle, but yet it expresses so much fandom, and it's almost like a secret code for coolness. And what's really kind of funny is people that don't know that it's related to the Haunted Mansion, just think, oh, okay, it is what it is. But those that know, it it is funny that it's like this secret code. I actually, you know, one of the various masks that I have um, that I wear, you know, during this time is the Haunted Mansion wallpaper. And when I went to a doctor's appointment the other day, I didn't even, you know, think about it. I was just wearing it. And she was like, oh, I love your Haunted Mansion mask. Where... 
somebody that's not a fan of the Haunted Mansion wouldn't know what it was. So it, it was kind of funny that they mentioned that um, in the article about it being this, you know, this uh, secret code thing. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of back and forth. And, and what this article talks about is how um, it the idea for or what ended up becoming the wallpaper for the Haunted Mansion was actually a couple of different concepts that were kind of thrown out from original ideas from the Museum of the Weird, which was the original concept for what they wanted the Haunted Mansion to kind of start out at. Um, and the ideas were kind of scrapped and a couple of other artists came forward and took little pieces of it and kind of put it all together. And then, you know, we have our iconic uh, wallpaper as it is now. Um, so it's a really interesting article. Um, you know, we're not going to go through through all of it, but, you know, it talks about how, you know, there were, you know, what the, the different inspirations were. Um, you know, there were a lot of uh, Victorian type stylings that were coming in, uh, a lot of, um, hippie-esque, you know, um, you know, from, from a lot of the, the era of, you know, marijuana use and, and things like that and the trippiness of it. So it was all these different things kind of, you know, melding together to bring us this iconic wallpaper that again is is kind of like the the secret code fandom, uh, you know, for those that are are, are fans of the Haunted Mansion. Yeah, that's it's kind of cool. And even in the uh, <clears throat> one of the later uh, revamps of the Haunted Mansion, they even had sections as you went through, mm -hmm. at least in Disneyland. I don't know uh, Disney World. I don't know if they did it in Disneyland. Right, right. Where they had the eyes blinking. Right. A special effect where the eyes were blinking. Right. Um. So. Just sort of bringing it to life mm -hmm. even more. Right. Um, and they've done several remodels on the mansions mm -hmm. where they've, in the process of remodeling, they've taken the old wallpaper down, they've put new wallpaper up, and we were even able to obtain a right. uh, swatch of mm -hmm. the original wallpaper. Right. From, from one of the renovations. Mm -hmm. so you actually have a framed version right, of that. Right, I do. Mm -hmm. So... Very iconic. Very mm -hmm. cool. Very yeah. cool. So tell us how uh, you can get access to hidden places in Disney World and land now. So this was an article that came out in the San Francisco Gate um, dot com. Um, and the author, you know, uh, of this talks about, you know, at a time when people haven't been inside Disneyland in almost a year and many others are choosing not to travel to Walt Disney World as the pandemic continues, there's a new way for people to connect to the park that never have been able to before. And it's just a download away. And it's actually through the TikTok app. So a lot of people have, um, been on TikTok for for a while now, but now more and more companies are starting to to join because of you know an easy way to to connect with their fans. And Disney Parks has set up a um a a channel on it uh, a, a a profile. And what's interesting is they're posting behind the scenes stuff that they've never posted before. So one of their first videos that they posted was of inside Cinderella's castle suite. So there've been a couple of, you know, a couple videos um, that they've done throughout the years um, when they had first renovated it. And when you could uh, win a night stay in, you know, various uh, sweepstakes that they had. Well, this was really kind of the first time in a while they had, they did like a little tour. Um, the videos on, on TikTok are, are as short as 15 seconds or up to a minute long. So not very long. Um, and they do continuously loop. Um, so it's kind of interesting within, you know, this quick one minute, you get this you know, a uh, tour of something that you haven't seen. So one of the things, like I said, was they did the Cinderella's uh, Royal Suite. So you got to see, you know, the bathroom and the bedroom and the view and, and what it would look like at night. Um, 
then a couple of people had posted, hey, what about the Disneyland ducks? Um, and some a cast member did a video and they were going around showing, yeah, this is how the ducks are. Everybody's OK. Um, and because of the park not being open, they've been able to go and do behind the scenes uh, videos that most people, again, haven't seen, but they're also doing a bunch of renovation as well since the park isn't open. So they're able to show, you know, people um, who wouldn't normally be able to see what's going on. So kind of cool that they're, you know, taking this aspect, you know, TikTok, you know, was kind of known for, you know, their dances, like everybody would log on and, hey, here's a funny dance that I do. But, you know, there are some really kind of interesting things that have have popped up on it. And this happens to to be one of them. That's that's kind of cool. Now, I know for, well, geez, for decades now, Disney's done behind the scenes tours and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. And their in-person tours are usually age restricted depending on right. what they show you right how protective are they on what their behind the scenes stuff is on tiktok well and, and that's the thing is they're not showing you like i i don't think they've shown the utilidor anything right like that it's pretty much been within you know the parks um the one thing that they did was after they uh did the um cinderella uh they did sleeping beauty's castle they showed the the ducks around the castle they actually went and did the horses at disneyland um the the, the circle tarot. d no the oh, circle d okay. the actual horses oh, wow. that normally go through the park and pull they went and did a checkup on them um and they were also doing um for animals being born at animal kingdom in florida oh, they were cool. doing behind the scenes of that so they're, they're almost doing some of the same things that they would do during a tour um but they're not being overly revealing right and, and right because the biggest magic. thing and and i think the biggest thing for like the the behind the, um uh behind the ears or uh the kingdom the, uh, keys to the king to the keys to the kingdom the biggest reason for the age restriction is so that you don't happen to see mickey mouse out of uniform right. that's really right. where the the cutoff of the age is for that tour so they haven't really done you know anything like that on their page but it, it's more all these other areas and and i think you know they're kind of taking requests also like if you put hey how are and one person said um what about the disneyland cats right um right. and they haven't done one yet but they said don't worry, we'll, you know, we'll check in on them. Everybody's doing okay, um, you know, but we'll we'll do a video of them, you know, later on. So kind of cool. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So that was all we had for our Disney detective. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back in a minute with our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. For over seven years... The Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group we're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. <laughs> um, so uh, our first article is talking about the replacement plan for the Cara Dune uh, 
uh, character from Mandalorian and obviously uh, the Rangers of the New Republic show. Um, so this article came from giantfreakingrobot.com. I just like saying that, by the way. Um, and again, this is a lot of speculation in this because there's no, um, you know, concrete, yes, this is the plan. This is all, you know, kind of rumory uh, stuff. So just wanted to, to put that out there. So according to insider Daniel Rickman uh, on his page, he said that Lucasfilm is planning to replace uh, Gina uh, Carano's character in the upcoming series Rangers of the New Republic with another strong female lead. Uh, Reichman uh, is light on further details, but this does seem to confirm that Cara Dune was set to be the lead in Rangers of the New Republic. So have they actually found somebody? Are they still looking? So again, according to this article, they're, you know, it's do we kind of replace her with somebody else or do we find so it, it kind of sounds like they're looking to just replace the character altogether like she's just kind of gonna go off because as far as the mandalorian in you know one of the last episodes that she was in we saw um captain uh tiva attempting to recruit her to the new republic so that was going to be kind of the her her moving from the mandalorian over so now you know do they completely drop that but according to the hollywood reporter sources said that they had planned to actually unveil her during the december investors plan <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll call for work this weekend. <laughs> and we were trying to get in without, you know, anything. Um, so that as of right now, there's no immediate plans to recast her. But one of the people that's kind of um, been game, uh, gaining steam in all of this um, is Lucy Lawless, um, that she's kind of the, the front runner to be, um, you know, obviously not the Cara Dune character but some type of um warrior type person uh to kind of take over where they kind of wanted to to go with it and again nothing is set in stone with it it's all rumors but a lot of people were like yeah i could totally see you know lucy lawless in in this type of of character moving forward so we'll say you know again all speculation at this point, but you never know. Well, and I think the, the thing to keep in mind here is that the universe is a big place. There's sure a lot of characters is. in it. Absolutely. So no need to uh, get bogged down with a single character mm -hmm. who's problematic at best in the mm -hmm. real world. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Should be interesting. I'm sure they're not going to cancel the show with, with her not being part of it Absolutely. at this point. So they'll just they'll find a replacement. Somebody else. So tell us about our guide to canon novels. Yeah, so this was an interesting article that popped up from uh, denofthegeek.com. And, um, you know, it basically talks about, you know, are you looking to fill in the gaps, you know, in Star Wars stories? And this was a very insightful list, um, you know, that, that talks about everything, you know, basically all in in chronological order from before the peak uh before the prequels all the way up to uh the last uh um trilogy that that came out and um you know and it even includes um young adult novels as well and i'm sure you've probably read a good portion, if not all, maybe probably not all, but you've probably read a, a good portion of it. And even talking about the newer books that are going to be um, coming out. So it talks about it, you know, it lists it um, before the prequel. So you have the, the high Republic light of the Jedi Queens peril. Um, then you even have the prequel error, which is uh, queen shadow, the Thrawn books, um, uh, Rogue One prequel of Catalyst. Uh, then it even breaks it down into um, after Revenge of the Sith, but before A New Hope. There's a whole, you know, error of books that that comes in with that. Then of course you have the original trilogy, 
and the books, um, you know, that go in between all of that. Then you have the Return of the Jedi and all the books. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, you could be reading for like years. <laughs> And I did. <laughs> and I'm sure you did. And then, of course, you know, the sequel trilogy, um, you know, and, and all of those. And really a very comprehensive list um, that I've I've seen, you know, put together. And again, like I said, it's in chronological order for anybody. Um, so the link will obviously be, you know, on our website or, you know, in the notes, if you're, you're interested in, in pulling up everything. Cause again, we could probably go through, you know, do a whole special just on this with your insights of, you know, what you've read and, and what you haven't yet. So. Yeah. And there's a extensive amount of <clears throat> canon novels out there mm -hmm. and, and I've read a lot of them. Uh, I certainly haven't read all of them. In fact, most of my reading has been the non-canon, what used to be called the Expanded Universe. Mm -hmm. um, I have like the last complete four series of books of that, all of which that I've read. And I've kind of picked and chosen what I've read from the new stuff here. I haven't read anything from the High Republic yet. Mm -hmm. So might have to get into that and see if that's any good. There you go. So that was all we had for our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a minute with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Dum 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 dum. Go for entertainment news. So uh, this article came from People.com, and it seems that Stevie Wonder is heading to West Africa for a profound reason. Uh, during a recent interview with Oprah Winfrey, the 25-time Grammy winner, Grammy winner, say that five times fast, opened up about his future plans to live in Ghana indefinitely as part of his efforts to shield his lineage of grandchildren and great grandchildren from racial injustice in the U.S. He said, I want to see this nation smile again, and I want to see it before I leave to travel to move to Ghana because I'm going to do that. When asked if he plans to relocate permanently, the star replied, I am, because I don't want to see my children's children's children have to say, oh, please like me, please Please respect me. Please know that I am important. Please value me. What kind of life is that? The star's decision uh, made um, was made by uh, was influenced by a number of reasons. Um, but it's often said that living in um, a majority uh, black region gives black individuals a sense of safety, confidence, liberation, and pride. Uh, many argue that within the U.S., attending HBCUs uh, historically black colleges and universities gives black um, American black students the same feeling. Um, Wonder said that he had actually been considering moving to Ghana um, since as early as 1984, uh, sorry, 1994 per the Orlando Sentinel. He said at the time um, he had told um, he at a, a gathering of international uh, association of 
of African American music that he had fallen in love with the country and there was more of a sense of community there. Um, he had, uh, last month he had, uh, wrote an emotional letter, uh, in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, um, where he said, Dear Dr. King, I met you when I was 14 years of age. Uh, you are a true hero and you became an inspiration. Um, he later said that it is painful to know that the needle has not moved one iota. For 36 years, we've had a national holiday honoring your birthday and principles, yet you would not believe the lack of progress. It makes me physically sick. I'm sick of politicians trying to find an easy solution to a 400-year-old problem. Uh, the vocalist concluded the letter with a call to action for all those in the Senate to speak truth to what they know they can physically see and begin the steps forward uh, towards accountability, forgiveness, and then healing. So, you know, you got to do what you have to do, you know, for well, for your family. It's really hard to argue with anything mm -hmm. the man says. Absolutely. Especially after living through four years of the, you know, administration we just lived through and mm -hmm. how much worse things got in such, yeah. you know, we 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 regressed 30 years in those four years mm -hmm. uh, in race relations. Yeah. It's, so it, it's, it's tragic. you know, it's sad to see, you know, somebody leave the country that you grew up in, you know, for that someplace else is, is safer. But again, you have to do what, what's, what's right for your family. Is that not only is that a viable alternative, it's a requirement now mm -hmm. if you want to have the kind of respect yeah. and freedom that you deserve. Yeah. You know, our country has a long way to go before mm -hmm. we get where we need to be. Absolutely. So on a lighter note, mm -hmm. the MCU might be getting a major casting shakeup. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So the latest casting rumor surrounding the MCU has fans of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. shaking with excitement. The speculation is that Agent Phil Coulson and Quake, Daisy Johnson, could return to the MCU later this year. So the reports had actually um, come around on fan uh, fandomwire.com saying, you know, that we can reveal that Greg Clark's, uh, Clark Gregg's, uh, Agent Phil Coulson and, um, Chloe Bennett's Daisy Johnson are returning to M the MCU for an upcoming project on Disney Plus. Uh, while we couldn't exactly confirm which series they'll be in, all signs have a been pointing to Secret Invasion, which is currently in production. So Secret Invasion does seem to be most likely to be the project that they'll be returning because it will also be featuring uh, former S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury. Um, it will follow the comic book uh, storyline of the same name and will revolve around the infiltration of a shape-shifting of the shape-shifting aliens, the Krills, um, and uh, ben Mendelssohn, um, who was in Captain Marvel, he will actually be in the series as well. Um, so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. aired its final episode last uh, August of 2020, and uh, star Chloe Bennett had been very vocal about wanting to return to the role of Daisy Johnson. Um, so it's kind of cool if this is, you know, what's going to happen. Um, so you know, it seems like uh, the way that they had ended uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, they had kind of ended the series where things had just begun uh, with Endgame. So they kind of brought the timeline together. So they kind of brought it up to speed. So it's very possible that they could, uh, you know, add these two characters to to bring them over uh, to to uh, Invasion. So we'll have to wait and see, but it could be uh, very cool because they were, you know, uh, favorites of, of ours uh, from uh, when we were watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, it should be interesting. We, uh, when we watched uh, Captain Marvel mm -hmm. and they debuted the Skrulls, they kind of turned the tables on mm -hmm. the nature of the Skrulls. Right. And made the Skrulls, the, the, the good guys, well, almost. The, the oppressed, you know, uh, minority of the, of the galaxy. Right. And you you developed a sense of sympathy for them, but, mm -hmm. but you have to keep in mind that that movie was set in the 1990s, right? 
So the Secret Invasion comics, the scrolls are the bad guys. The other guys that come in shape shifting, taking over people people's bodies, and mm-hmm. basically what they did was what the Marvel Cinematic Universe did in um, Winter Soldier. Okay, with the Hydra taking over Shield. Gotcha. It was actually okay. the scrolls sort of that that did that. So. They've kind of munged things together here to mm-hmm. keep the themes, but with different people in those roles okay. and stuff. Okay, okay. So it'll be interesting, especially if they're bringing uh, Ben Mendelsohn back in, mm-hmm. to see where that, you know, finding them a planet to, to mm-hmm. live peacefully by themselves and not be bothered winds up with them becoming Trying to the take secret over. invasion. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Did something go wrong obviously with, yes. with all of that so so that yeah. that should be uh should be an interesting twist to see is it a limited series that they're doing here they haven't said what any of of invasion is, is going to be like so i guess we'll we'll have to wait and see for more uh information definitely something to look forward to mm-hmm. and that was all we had for our entertainment news mm-hmm. we'll be right back with our insightful picks Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick is actually a trilogy of movies um, that are based on a trilogy of novels of the same name. Um, it's uh, the, the the movie series is To All the Boys I Loved. And it's a and this is where the, the teenage girl in me, you know, comes out. So uh, To All the Boys is a, a series of American teenage romance films based on the trilogy of novels of the same name. Um, and it, you know, the movie centers around a shy teenage girl who writes five love letters who she uh, where she never planned to send them out. And years later, her younger sister finds them and sends them out to the five different boys uh, who she had a crush on, you know, in junior high. And now she's in high school. Um, So the first movie uh, sort of centers around her and the one boy um, kind of setting up a contract where they fake pretend to date because he kind of breaks up with somebody and wants to kind of get back at her. So she decides to be the pretend girlfriend. And of course, by the end of the movie, they fall in love and they really start dating. Um, Then the second movie takes place a year later and everything that goes on um, with them. And what happens is one of the last boys that she never heard from in the first movie that she sent a letter to she finally hears from so again cute little situations pop up with that and then uh the last movie which actually just came out um february of this year um is their senior year and basically the turmoil of of dating during senior year and what college do you go to do you pick something you know close together so you can still date or do you you know go your separate ways and and, you know, throw caution to the wind. So, you know, cute little, you know, teeny bopper uh, love story, you know, for, for those that want something different to, to watch. All right. Cute pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is uh, kind of a documentary, kind of a sitcom, limited series type thing. Um, my pick this week is one that I was hesitant to watch um, only because it's hosted by someone who I absolutely can't stand as an actor. Um, it's hosted by Nicolas Cage and it's called History of Swear Words. Uh, streaming on Netflix. Uh, in the show, Nicolas Cage hosts the proudly profane, funny, and engagingly educational series about the history and impact of the most notorious English wor- swear words. Uh, the unscripted series explores the history of swear words through interviews with experts in entomology, popular culture, history, and entertainment with each episode diving into the origins, usage, and cultural impact of specific curse words. The show was interesting in that, 
Nicolas Cage was actually funnier in this show than I think I've ever seen him. And I have a very difficult time with Nicolas Cage as an actor because Nic Nicolas Cage does a very good job playing Nicolas Cage. Uh, he's not particularly well at, at convincing me that he's anyone other than himself with all of the mannerisms. But those mannerisms really lended themselves to this TV show um, because he's generally a, a, a connoisseur of some of the words that they actually talk about in the documentary itself. And it wasn't just a bunch of people sitting around cussing and swearing, although there was plenty of that as well. Uh, but each episode, and I think there were seven episodes, each episode they, they took a, a word that's a popular swear word in, in English language, and they looked at the origins of it. They looked at the various forms that it took where, you know, some, some words transformed over the years from very different meanings. And they looked at what, how their usage in popular culture has changed over hundreds of years. Some of which they went back as far as the middle ages on some of these words. Um, the only criticism I think I really would lodge at the show itself is the order in which they did the words. Um, they started off very strong. <laughs> to say the least. they ended up with a word that I can actually say on this podcast, damn. Damn. And it seemed like it just sort of sputtered out at the end there where you would have, you would have ended with one of the bigger right. four letter words. Right. And I do want to kind of point out too, that you didn't even want to watch. This. That's you know I covered that already, okay. that I did not want to watch this show. Right. And I was and like, Oh, come on. I think it'll be funny. And anything with Nicolas Cage, I try to stay away from. Right. I, right. I had mentioned, um, you had stepped out very briefly, but I had mentioned yeah. that, uh, I, I don't like Nicholas. Nicholas Cage is very good at playing Nicholas Cage. <laughs> and He's, he and he did that in this, yes, which was and that, funny. And and his character, right. he, he as yeah. an individual was perfect for Absolutely. the show. That's why yeah. it worked. Right. Um when he's asked to play anybody else, he's not convincing at all. Right. He never sells me. Right. Uh, but you know, it was a it was a funny show. We were laughing mm -hmm. at a number of the Absolutely. of the areas there. Not one for the kids. There's a lot yeah. of cussing that goes on. Mm -hmm. Um, cause they demonstrate how the word is used repeatedly in each episode. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it, in the end, I, it, I was entertained and mm -hmm. I was, I was glad that I watched it. Yeah. So history of swear words, uh, currently on Netflix and we'll be right back. So that was all we had for this week. Mm -hmm. Did we have any closing remarks or anything like that to, to go over? No, I don't think no? so. All right. Well, short episode today. We got through everything we needed to get through. And uh, next week we will be back with our official dun, 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 dun. episode. Um, and uh, we'll get to show off some of our collections a little bit, which it's worth mentioning, by the way, that our collections – well, my collection actually did show up on a, a pop culture publication at one point in time where I was solicited. But we almost wound up on yes. a show when we were solicited going to one of the local conventions. Yeah. And I think what the way that the show ended up, the show kind of the morphed. Show, the show so changed. we had gone to uh, one of Monster our Mania, Monster Mania. It was one of the Monster Manias. And they had somebody there. And it was secret stash was the the original uh or the version of it that they were looking at and and basically they wanted somebody that had an extensive collection right uh it wasn't anything where we had to sell anything it was basically they were going to come to the house and interview and you know um take a look at at everything and we were initially asked about it and then i guess they kind of changed the format of the show so you know we've we haven't been on so uh, that's why we decided <coughs> to put our own show together right, exactly we said we don't need those people we can do it ourselves <laughs> <laughs> so next week we'll, we'll, we'll be a little bit of that we're going to do some footage some shots of our our more uh, rare or prized or obscure things mm -hmm. 
because uh, we put a good deal of it on display right. in the studio yeah, you, here you, already. You kind of see it in the background, but we didn't, you know, we don't ever really, you know, focus in right. on it. Obviously, he's the Star Wars guy. If you if you didn't already know, you should know. Um, <laughs> and then I'm mostly Disney, right. the majority Haunted Mansion, but we also have, you know, Star Trek. We also have Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, sci-fi stuff, horror stuff for for me, um, you know. So we have a nice collection. Yeah. You know. So we'll 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 highlight some of the some of the stuff that we have and and put a little. Yeah. Since nobody, you know, no. Since nobody comes over to our house anymore yeah, for get-togethers, yeah. we can't show off anything. We figure, hey, let let's and, put it together for you guys to. And our to, house really is like a museum. Oh, it it totally so, is anyway but that's a teaser for that's, next week that's your teaser for next week tune in if you want to see some of the collection mm-hmm. next week other than that that's it another one in the books have a good week everyone bye bye